Hi, this is Karen O'Brien and uh, today I'm going to do a very quick video on map making with QGIS. So we're going to start with this project right here. It's already completed, so I'm going to open it and just take a little bit of data out of it. Uh, just see, click OK, that's fine. And yes, load the model. And then, OK, so what we have here, let me grab this. Whoops, just want to do a little bit of housekeeping here so this stuff is out of the way. And okay, we don't really need that. So this is the project that we're going to um, to show you today and it goes with Mapper. So if you come to this button in QGIS and run Mapper, just click OK, it'll load Mapper up. And then when you're in Mapper, you have to load the project. It's not going to tell Mapper where your project is. So my project is right here, has it has the data and results. So if I open that up in Mapper, actually, hold on. Let me grab, let me get rid of these three guys first. Otherwise, it will lock Mapper if I try to open Mapper with those maps loaded. So file, read results, and go right to your project folder, grab the fplane.data, and that's going to load all of the results that you can use into Mapper. It takes a bit of time to load this project. It's not too big of a project, so we'll just wait for it. It's worth the wait because it's a very nice project to map. While I'm there, I'll make sure that everything is okay. So before you load any data in Mapper, you want to make sure that you're in the right coordinate system because Mapper data is, um, it doesn't have a coordinate system assigned. It doesn't have the PRJ file. And in this case, I'm going to add my maps directly to my project. You don't, you can do that, or you can just have a separate QGIS uh, running for your results. And I'm going to click on this level right here because when I add my maps from Mapper, I want them to go down here in a different area. So here's a first map you get: ground, grid element, ground surface elevation. We also have water surface elevation. It's a calculated, um, it's calculating from the elevation plus the depth, so it takes a bit longer to map. Maximum flow depth, maximum flow depth is already loaded. Final flow depth, whoops, let me get the combined maximum flow depth with the channel. And one more, I'll get one more. Now, if you want a full mapper lesson, um, I'm going to show you where that is in just a moment. So this is the velocity, maximum velocity vector. Okay, that's nice. Now, if you want a full uh, mapper lesson that just talks about basic mapper, basic mapping with mapper, creating the plots, doing some editing, that's here in my training mapper training package. Advanced mapping help you do contours, stuff like that um, is here. Advanced mapping animation is here, and then advanced mapping for hazard mapping, damage assessment, depth to DTM points, stuff like that is here. And there are tutorials. Lesson six of the workshop lessons is all on Mapper, and it's pr practically its own book. So Mapper is very well documented and um, with help files. Now, once you get all of this stuff in Mapper, you don't really need Mapper anymore, so you can just shut it down. And then you go to your project folder. And you see that we have all of the shape files that we just loaded. The final flow depth, the flow depth, uh, the maximum. Let's see, I don't want any contours, so I'll just ignore all those. Um, combined channel and floodplain flow depth and the velocity vectors. We'll take this one, uh, velocity vectors, the maximum combined, and the flow depth at cell. I'm going to drag these onto the map and note that they do not have a coordinate reference system, so they're going to default to the project because I have set up QGIS so that that's the way it works. In my options, when I go to the coordinate reference system, I say to the project is created from the first CRS of the layer that's added, and for any 
project that does or any file that doesn't have a coordinate reference system it uses the project coordinate system that's in options settings options CRS I don't know why the error came up but I'm going to ignore it because I'm sure it's fine uh, let's see now we have to style this because when it comes in a couple of things about it is that it you can see here that it just comes in with black uh, lines around each polygon and there's a polygon for every grid element so what we will do is take first of all let's do this one at a time we can turn off the ones that we don't need or we can just leave them checked but let's start with I've already made a couple of style files but I want to show you how I made them first so start by double clicking on one of the layers that you want to manipulate if you select if you're in symbology and you go to the simple fill you can turn the stroke style off to no pen and then if you go to graduated fill that's up here you can first set the variable that's going to be grad that's going to define the classes that's in this case it's the maximum combined flow depth uh, choose a color ramp obviously I like blue because it's water uh, but there's all kinds of color ramps you can invert them um, you have all kinds of excellent and beautiful color ramps and you can create your own so you can do all wonderful things with mapping if you have a bit of creativity I don't so I'm going to go with blue classify it you can set up different methods of um, of breaking it I think this one's a pretty nice one pretty breaks is nice and then click apply you can see it over here now pretty breaks is useless on this one natural breaks that one this one's a little better apply yeah that one's a little better or you can just equal count and then add your own um, you can update these numbers however you want so I I like to turn off the first one and let's see that should turn it off if I click apply that should turn it off over here and then set this one to something a little bit better than 0 0.04 so 0 0.25 and then the upper value could be like 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5 to 1 is probably fine but let's put it to, to 1 and then 1 to 3 is probably fine and then I like to go 1 3 to 5 5 to 8 10 somewhere in there and if you're in metric you know just scale that down a little bit so that it you have good colors and I'll click apply and okay yep we're missing something we got some something that's gonna be fine so now you can see that what we did is we turned off some of the noise from that rainfall let's turn these guys off and so you can see that if you needed to see a little bit more water you just come back in here and re, re uh, edit the um, relabel these or change the values a little bit we'll just leave it as it is for now now once you get your style set up for the layer that you like you know you're gonna as every time you run the model or every time you make a change to something or maybe you have more than one model or more than one rainfall event that you want to map you don't want to do that every single time so instead you're going to just take this style layer and save it so if I right click the layer and I ex uh, hit the export button I can export that style layer file let's call it well here let's first grab this you you can and you can and you can export all of these categories I only need really symbology but that's okay it's fine to do the rest of it too so I'm going to click that and we'll call it uh, Peralta max combined uh, depth. Is it die is depth? Yep, it is channel and depth. Okay, and just save it and click OK. And now the next time I load this map or load a map of the, with this same name, I can grab that style. So flow depth at cell. I already have one. So I'm just going to set this one. So if I double click it, and I am on symbology I can go to the style and I can load it from a file and you can see here that Peralta max depth is already in here so I'll click OK and uh, load it and click OK again and boom that's how fast it is one more time we'll do the same thing for the velocity vector at cell 
I'll double click it. This one is a little different because it's a line, not a polyline, not a polygon. Um, but the whole method of coloring it is the same, except you might tinker around with the style width. So we'll load it from file, browse to the location. It's the V vector. Click OK, load it, click OK, and that should apply it. And it's that simple. Now, another thing that's simple, you grab the three layers, right click and group them. And we'll call this results. And then you can name it like this is the 500 year. And so I can have results for the 500 year um, or results from the 100 year, results from the 10 year. I can have results from design one, design two, etc. All on the same map and easily. And the great thing about QJS is that once you get this in here, it loads really quickly. Uh, it, it seems to be a little bit faster than ArcGIS when you have a lot of data loaded to the map and linked to the map. It just loads real quick. Then I save it, and then the next time you open it, your results will come right back in with the same styles and everything you need. Um, so that's pretty much it for mapping data from Mapper in QGIS. I'll stop the recording, and the next thing we'll do is adding data from text files or from directly from the project data to QGIS.